Can you put your phone up? Oh, I was just reading all of the updates about National Coming Out Day. What? Hi! Hello! How's it going? Great, how are you? Good. <laughs> Today is National Coming Out Day, and we thought it would be a great idea for us to finally tell our stories of how we came out, because they never really talked about mine on Top Model, um, so nobody really knows. But we thought that we would share our coming out stories with all of you. And lend advice. And some advice for if you are going through the process of coming out to your family and friends, or if you're trying to think about how to or what to do. We thought that it would be some advice for you to have from us too. Go first. So it was like a school night, my junior year in high school, and my parents and I got in a huge fight about doing my homework, and I kept them up till 1.30, 2 in the morning. I was such an ass about it. I was just so mad. I was relentless about not doing my homework. And I was just so tired of arguing with them and knew that I was just digging myself a deeper hole that I felt like if I took that opportunity to be like, yo, I'm gay, it would be like that slap in their face to just finally end the argument. Harsh, I know. But in reality, what happened was the entire mood of the argument subsided and they were like, come here, and I laid in between them on their bed and we talked about it. They had always known, they were waiting for me to find the right time to tell them, they didn't want to push it. And we just had this really long, you know, open discussion about me being gay and what it's been like for me. And it would just, I think it surprised me, but it also didn't because my parents are pretty awesome. But my coming out experience was a pleasant one. In the light of darkness of an argument with my parents, I was it's able like, to come I out. I hate you. <laughs> oh, let's talk about it. Let's and the moral of the story is I was still grounded because of my behavior, not because I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so how I came out. And then the next day I told my sister, and that was a different story because it's your sister, of course, they want their best friend to go shopping with them. So in this oh case, my God. me. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, mine, mine is a lot different. I had done a really good job of faking it and trying to be as straight as I could be. I'm from a really small town in Texas, and so I didn't come out until I was 21, and at that time I was dating a girl for a year. Yikes. Um, she's wonderful and I love her to death, but I got in a really bad situation where it was like, I'm either going to marry her or I'm going to have to make a decision to come out and be me. So it was like right before Christmas, I spent like two weeks like processing and trying to figure out what I was going to do and then it was Christmas Eve. <laughs> And I, we sat down and it took me like six hours to finally tell her what was going on with me. And she was an angel, super understanding, and we had a really long talk about it. And I couldn't ask for a better person for me to actually share that with in the first place. She's amazing. And then my parents came into the room and they were like, what's going on? What is, why, what's going on with you? We need to talk to you. We're confused about everything. And so I went in their room and I didn't plan on telling them that day. It was Christmas Eve. I was like, I'm gonna wait till like the new year. I'm gonna wait till a couple days later. And so we sat down in their room. I gave them this letter. I had wrote somebody about it. They read it and they're like, okay. <laughs> I think they were so confused as to like, how and why and what did they do wrong and how could they have done things differently and for me I had spent so long processing and saying like there's nothing I can do to change this at all I've been thinking about it for 18 years of my life and it's not their fault and so it was a lot more different than being like it's okay it was but you're still grounded <laughs> right but it, for me it was a lot of like trying to explain and help them with their confusion about it so it was still a positive thing, but it took a long time for it to be a positive thing. Um, I told my sister on Christmas Day, that was fine. Merry Christmas. My sister is great, she's wonderful and I love her. My parents are amazing as well. Um, but it's just a foreign territory to their generation of people. It's yeah. not something that was very common and now that it's more open and accepted, I think 
it's very confusing and hard for them to understand. So I just had to explain a lot to them, which is totally fine. Which I think, uh, me being on the other end of the spectrum, my mom grew up as, like, her career was being a buyer for department stores, so she worked in the fashion industry and was, she like, was with a lot of queens. gay men. <laughs> yeah, queens. queens. So she already was open to the idea. She had a lot of exposure to the gay community, where my dad, I think, was a little bit more, like, Okay. <laughs> well, and for me, my parents, my mom's a dance teacher, my dad's a football coach, so I have both spectrums of like masculine and then very feminine and graceful. So for me, I was like in the middle. I played sports and I was a dancer in high school. Something's in my eye. It's getting a little emotional just <laughs> remembering it all. I think my parents had kind of just let it go by the wayside because they always questioned. They were like, maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Because I had had girlfriends and I had played sports and I was, I don't know, trying to be masculine. But I still had a very effeminate character and quality about myself. So they always questioned, but I think they kind of put it away. Um, so when I told them, it was kind of a shock because they just thought that it wasn't real anymore, I guess. Now everything is amazing. My parents are great. My sister's great. All my friends acted so positive. And I haven't had any negative reactions from any of my peers. Me neither. Which has been fortunate. Wonderful. Coming out is different for everybody. Yeah, I was going to say, moral of the story is everyone's coming out story is unique and personal to them. No one's coming out story is ever going to be the same. So for you, if you're going through this process of like, when am I going to tell my loved ones or how am I going to tell them? Make sure it's... You are ready. Yes, that's the key thing. Is if you're not ready, then don't just do don't it. Feel to forced. just do it. Yeah. It always it needs to be a time when you are comfortable with yourself and stable in your. I don't know. Stable in your sexuality to where if you tell someone, you can explain it to them and accept what might happen and accept the consequences because if there are going to be any. Right. I mean, we both have had very positive experience, but that doesn't mean that people we don't know and people that we meet like as acquaintances don't have negative things to say because mm -hmm. we've had our fair share of negative glances and negative comments, uh, even as a couple, um, but also separately from school, high school, college, whatever. And you have to remember if it's going to be a negative result, there's always going to be light at the end of the tunnel. There's always going to be people out there who you can under that will be able to relate to, be able to understand what you're going through and that it's not the end. It's just only the beginning. It's a new chapter in your life that you are choosing to pursue the person you are made to be, you know? Like yeah. you are becoming who you are and that's a beautiful thing and no one should ever take that away from you. It's also really important to surround yourself with people who are gonna lift you up. You don't wanna have a support system of the first people that you tell are gonna I don't know, go tattle tell somebody else and it's become gonna become a negative experience. Or try to change you. Right. Mm -mm. Make sure it's people that you love and who love you for who you are no matter what you tell them. Maybe it's your best friend, maybe it's your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, your parents. Make sure it's that first person you tell um, is someone that loves you unconditionally. That way they can give you that love and you can feel a lot better. Because I remember the first person I told was one of my friends. Um, we sat on my bed for like three hours and then I finally told her and she was like, thank you for finally telling me. <laughs> yeah, I think. And then I just like broke down. I was like, <laughs> I think sometimes I you might be more surprised at the outcome than, you know what I mean? Like you're gonna well, be. Like, and after and after the initial, the first person is the worst. Yes. The first like two or three people are the worst. But after those first couple of people, then you want to go tell it off the top like, of a mountain. I need a rainbow flag and paint no, my face uh, No, uh, no, you just have this more inner in your, confidence. Well, in your head, you just become. Like you said, a You're lot more, more secure. confident and secure with yourself. So it's a lot easier. So it rolls off into your first hurdle. Yes. To talk to anybody. And you're proud. Very and that's an important thing is that you want to embrace that and be proud. Don't ever come out because someone is forcing you to come out. Say you get in a relationship with somebody and that person is like, well, I'm not going to date you anymore unless you tell your parents. Don't feel obligated mm. to tell your parents. That right. person probably doesn't like you or love you if as that, much as they yeah, say. If that person really cares. You need to do out. it on your own terms because if you do it when it's somebody's forcing you, it's going to be a lot more emotional and a yeah. lot more negative 
than you think because you may not be completely ready. That's good advice on the flip side. So if you're dating someone who's not out publicly or to their family and friends, you need be to considered. really have patience and understand you are in those shoes at one point in your life. So it's their journey. It's their their path to be on, so just be there and understand what they're going through. And as, port as important as it is to be yourself through any experience in life, it's also important to be emotionally stable. Yes. So, yes, be yourself, be who you are, but also you need to be ready to share yourself with the world and understand that not everything is going to be positive. So make sure that you are completely confident and comfortable and ready to slay the world before you tell anyone. Amen. Make sure it's on your terms. Hopefully if you're thinking about coming out or you've already come out or somebody's talking to you about it, this advice helps you a little bit. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment down below. We'll answer any of your questions about coming out if you have any. And we will see you next time. Bye. Ew, you just ruined that. Bye.